Welcome, I'm Sam Faddis. This is Ground Truth, and today we're going to be talking about separate but equal, something I thought we'd never be talking about in the United States of America ever again. Back in the days of legalized segregation, apologists and defenders of that system trotted out an idea called separate but equal, and essentially it went like this. Yes, black kids and white kids are going to have to go to different schools. We're going to have to be segregated by race and other facilities, but it doesn't matter. It's okay because the facilities will be equal. The schools will be equal, for instance. Now, it should be said that before we even get to the part where this is morally and ethically indefensible, this was always kind of a lie. There never really was a time when anybody was actually devoting the same kind of money and resources to the high school for the black kids in the neighborhoods where they lived as they were to the high schools for white kids, for instance. It didn't really matter in the end because the Supreme Court struck down the entire system. There were a series of rulings, the most notable of which probably Brown versus Board of Education. And what the Supreme Court said was, look, leaving aside for a minute the fact that this is a lie that you're devoting the same kind of resources to these facilities, this is all completely indefensible. Separate equals inherently unequal. You cannot take black kids, force them to go off to their own school, segregate them from the larger society, and not in the process do harm. And if you think about it, that principle at the root of that is really at the heart of everything we've done in the civil rights movement since, the feminist movement, even the movement for rights for same-sex couples, for instance. The basic idea is that we are integrating everyone. Blacks have a right to go to school with white kids and to live in the same neighborhoods with whites. And women certainly have the right to have a career and be in the workplace and represented in the same way that men are. And that's the path we have followed now for at least a couple of generations, or at least up until very recently. Right now at Syracuse University in New York State, students are protesting, have a series of demands, and the key demand is that they be allowed to be segregated by race. And strangely enough, it is African-American black students who are pushing this demand that they be allowed to choose to live only with black roommates and separate from white kids. Very strange, very bizarre, also very disturbing if you think about it. One wonders how we reached a point where black students are in fact demonstrating in support of policies that segregationists would have been forcing on them back in the 1950s. And one also wonders exactly where this is going to end. Presumably next we will have not only rooms segregated by race, but residence halls, dining facilities, probably then classrooms, maybe ultimately back to blacks only schools. Strange, puzzling, disturbing, and somewhere I have to think that George Wallace, champion of segregation forever, is smiling. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Ground Truth.